the snipping tool built into Windows 11 is quite useful for capturing what is on your screen. Over the years, they've added additional features and now does a lot more than just taking basic screenshots. So let's dive in and I'll show you how to use all of its features. I'll now show you a couple ways to get access to the snipping tool. The first way is to click the search box in the taskbar and type snipping tool. Select it. The primary app for it will open up. The other way to access it is by using the keyboard shortcut, which is the Windows key plus shift plus S. This will open a simple interface here at the top. This is my preferred way to access it quickly. There are two main buttons here. One for taking a screenshot of what is on your screen, and the other one added a couple years ago lets you record what is on your screen. Let's start with the basics first. When using their app to take a screenshot, click on the new button. You'll notice that the smaller interface for the tool opens at the top. Your screen dims slightly and your cursor changes to a crosshair. Using the default snipping mode, which is rectangle, left click and drag the area you'd like to capture and then let go. That's it, you've taken a screenshot. This editor window will open automatically. I'll explain more about this coming up. The snipping tool offers four ways to take a screenshot. I'll explain those right now. Clicking the drop down menu for snipping mode, rectangle is the most commonly used as I showed you in our last example. Select it, click on new, left click and drag anywhere on your screen and let go. It's great for capturing a specific area, omitting everything else. Just below rectangle is window. Using this one will capture an entire window with one click. Select it. And after selecting new, click on any open window. You'll now have a near perfect screenshot of the window you selected. Now for the final two here. Full screen will capture your entire screen or screens if you're using more than one monitor. This is essentially the same as hitting the print screen key on your keyboard. And the last one here is freeform, probably for most the least useful one here. To use it, select freeform, new, left click and drag and draw any shape that you want with your cursor. When you let go, it captures only the inside of what you have drawn. The delay timer comes in handy for those times you need to capture something on your screen that only appears briefly. For example, I use this quite a bit with those menus that disappear when you click anywhere else. First, select your snipping mode. I'll go with window for this one. Then set your delay time. Your choices are three seconds, five seconds, and 10 second delay. I'll just go with five. Then click on new. After you've taken a screenshot, the snipping tool opens its editor where you can mark it up prior to saving it to your computer, sharing it with others, or printing it out. Selecting the ball pen here at the top lets you write on your screenshot, adjust the slider for thickness, then if needed, select your color from the palette, then draw on your screenshot. Because drawing freehand can be sloppy, especially when using a mouse, it can help you to create perfect straight lines, rectangles, and squares. For example, when drawing a rectangle, I'll try to do one here. And just left click and drag it and connect it, keeping the mouse held in. Once it's perfect, let go. And you can adjust this if you need to. That's pretty good. This also works with ovals and circles. I'll try to do an oval. And you can undo any changes that you made by hitting Control Z on your keyboard. Next to the ballpoint pen is the highlighter to help showcase a specific area or text within a screenshot. Pick a color. You can also adjust the size by using the slider. Then left click and drag an area or text that you want to highlight. The eraser tool lets you remove any markups that you've done. After selecting the tool, 
just left click and drag an area you'd like to erase. To simply erase all of your annotations at once, click the down arrow on the eraser tool and select Erase All Markups, and now they're gone. The Shapes button lets you add perfect squares, circles, straight lines, and arrows. There's also a small number of emoji to choose from. For example, I'll use the square to outline an area. You can choose the fill color and adjust the opacity if you want. I'll just leave it on transparent. Then choose an outline color. Here you can also adjust the opacity and size. I'll go with yellow. In your screenshot, left click and drag the area you would like to outline. And then let go. For example, with this one, on the four corners, you can adjust the sizing. There's a crop tool that when selected, lets you drag the handles at the top, bottom, sides, and corners to keep only the desired portion of the screenshot you want, getting rid of what you don't want. When you're done making adjustments, at the very top, click the check mark. This will be a cool one for some of you. The snipping tool now lets you extract the text from your screenshots. To do this, click the Text Actions button in the toolbar and select Copy All Text. All of the text will now be on your clipboard. Just paste it wherever you need it, email, chat, document, etc. If you have a document with sensitive information, the Quick Redact feature will automatically block phone numbers and emails from a screenshot. To use it, in the toolbar, select Text Actions. The drop-down arrow lets you select email addresses and phone numbers. I've got both of those checked. Then just click on Quick Redact. In this case, you'll notice it blocked out the email addresses, but for some reason, it didn't block out the phone numbers. If that happens to you, you can do this manually by highlighting them by double-clicking, right-click, and select Redact Text. When you're done marking up your image, you can save it to your computer by clicking the Save As button in the upper right. Then just save it wherever you want it. If you need additional editing tools not available in the Stipping Tool Editor, click on Edit in Paint. This will open Microsoft Paint, which is built into Windows and has improved quite a bit over the last couple of years. The Snipping Tool now lets you record what is on your screen. You could use the keyboard shortcut, which is the Windows key plus Shift plus R to begin recording. Or you could open up the Snipping Tool and select the Record button that looks a lot like a video camera. Click New. Just like a rectangle screenshot, left click and drag the area of your screen you want to record, and then let go. You can grab the handles on the corners, sides, and top to adjust the size. Here you can select your microphone, and there's a button here to mute the audio coming from your computer. I can't use two screen recorders at the same time, so I'll simply tell you. To begin recording, click on Start. When you're done, click that same button again to stop recording. When the recording is finished, it's automatically saved to your Videos folder. To change this, click the three-dot menu icon in the upper right and select Settings. Scroll down to the Screen Recording section and selecting Open Folder lets you change where screen recordings are saved to. Thank you for watching. If this tutorial for the snipping tool was useful for you, give this video a thumbs up and share it with others. And if you're new to our channel and haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe and make sure to hit the bell to not miss out on our latest how-to videos and other tech-related stuff.